What's up, guys? Laura Whitmore here, owner of Strategic Test Prep. I've been a test prep coach for 16 years now. I super score a 1570 on the SAT. And I'm here today because there's a lot of changes that have happened with the digital SAT, namely in the standard English conventions category. So if you struggle with the grammar questions, or even if you're good at the grammar questions, there are like some extra things that you need to know that trick everybody, even the highest scoring students. So in this video today, I'm going to cover those things. Also, if you're taking the paper test still and you're in the U.S., this video will be helpful to you. So stick around as well. All right, guys, before we get into the video, this video is brought to you by Preply, the digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and Google Play. So if you're running out of questions, guys, because there's only so many Blue Book exams tests out there, download Preply today. You can access hundreds of additional questions that are designed just like those on the digital SAT. And best of all, you can access it from your mobile device so you can prep on the go whenever you want, wherever you want, and as much and as little as you want. So I will link up here right now and down below so you can get properly right now. All right, guys. So standard English conventions are at like number 15 in each module. That's about where they start. I actually suggest to all my students that when they get to an English module, they skip right to number 15 and start working on the standard English conventions first. These are give me points, you guys. Once you know the tricks, they are so easy to get. And you want to make sure you're banging those out first because they're quicker. Okay, so my first tip for you guys deals with um, situations where you have verb tenses as the answer choices. So there's a couple things going on when this happens. And let me just make a note. We're looking at this example problem here. So all of these are verb tenses. Um, you could be dealing with subject verb agreement or parallelism, okay? But I'll tell you guys right off the bat, I already know what the answer is just by looking at the answer choices. because Usually the one verb that is different, meaning, you know, the one verb that's singular tense and then the rest are plural tense or vice versa will be the answer. So were, have been, and are are all plural tenses because I can put the word they in front of it. I can say they were, they have been, they are. I cannot say they has been. That is a singular tense. So chances are the answer is C. Now, on this one, the answer really is C. And this is something else you guys need to know with the digital SAT. They're obsessed with timelines. So you want to pay attention to, did this happen in the past one time? Okay, let me make a little note on here. If it was in the past one time, it's just going to be past tense. So, for instance, were. If it happened in the past, but it was ongoing in the past, but it's done now, it's going to be what's called a past perfect tense, I think. Don't quote me on this. I'm not a grammar teacher. I just show you guys tricks so you can get the point. But basically, in this case, you would say had been, okay? If it's in the past, but still ongoing in the present, then that's present perfect, I'm pretty sure. So you would just say has been, okay? And then obviously, if it's in the present, you would say is, or any variation depending on the verb. So like, just to give you an example of like a past that's ongoing but done, if the sentence said in 1903 during his travels, you would say he had been da 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 because you know it was in the past. They said it was 1903, but during his travels basically implies that it happened ongoing in 1903. So just get a handle on those different tenses. Now, why is it present perfect here? I mean, just to break it down, you know, she won a book in the present, because it says the award-winning book is Harris's first novel. So she just won it. That's present. But it said that at the age of 12, she actually won a contest as well. So that was in the past. So that was something that happened in the past, but is continuing in the present, which is why you need to pick has been. This was a low-level, easy question. Honestly, they didn't give, like, if they had given this one as had been, this would have been a way harder question in module two. So you would have to pick has been instead of had been because it's still going on in the present. All right, this next one is something that is happening consistently on the digital SAT, but it's also being tested on the paper SAT right now. When you have a lead into a sentence, for instance, you know, something that um, worms you up to the sentence with an introductory comma. Like for instance, in this case, we have upon re recovering two years later, introduction comma. Or I could say, although the ticket price was high or running down to the beach or whatever, 
the subject hasn't been introduced yet, you guys. So you know what? When you have a lead in, you have to put the subject right after. And at the end of the day, the subject is what the lead in was talking about. So the subject in this case is going to be whatever recovered two years later. Well, the rain wouldn't recover two years later. So that's not the subject that can't go right after it. Henry's rain, same thing that doesn't recover it. What is it? That can't be the subject. The only thing that can be the subject is Henry, because Henry is the only thing that could be recovering two years later. Easy peasy. All right. If this video is helping you guys so far and you like it, make sure to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I come out with videos each and every week to help you guys master the SAT. All right, next one. Now we're on comma placement. Now, my strategy that I teach my students for comma placement is basically to just read it out loud and listen to where you pause. You want to be proactive and not reactive. If you read all four answer choices, A, B, C, and D, trying to figure out which one is best, it can get real confusing really quickly. So let me just walk you guys through this. What I would do is I would pretend that there's no commas at all in answer choice A. And then I'm just going to read it out loud. OK, so it says in 1937, Chinese American screen actor Anna Mae Wong, who had portrayed numerous villains and secondary characters, but never a heroine, finally got a starring role in Paramount Pictures, A Daughter of Shanghai, a film that critic Steina Chin claims expanded the range of possibilities for Asian images on screen. Now, when I just read that, I read it at a nice leisurely pace. If you read it too fast, you won't be able to hear where you pause. When I read that, I could read right through it smoothly without having to take a breath or a pause at all. So I need to pick answer choice C since C has no commas in it. But just to deepen your understanding of what's going on here and why that is, you guys, if you have a description and then the subject... You don't need commas. So see how they described her as a critic? They had the description first. And then our subject, Stina Chin. So I can read that right through. Critic Stina Chin claims, if you have a subject first, and then they describe the subject, that description has to come between two commas, okay? So if I said Stina Chin, critic for blah, 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 magazine, comma, do you see how I have to pause after I say her name and then I want to talk more about her? So just be pay attention to the order because that is super important and they test that a lot. Punctuation rules. You guys, I'm going to run you through real quick all four punctuation rules you need to know to master this test. You have to have a complete sentence on the left-hand side of a colon. Have to. If you do not have a complete sentence, do not pick the colon. Now, on the right-hand side of the colon, yes, you can have a list, but that's not always the case, guys. All my students say, oh, you need a list. You need a list. Not true. Anything can go on the right-hand side. It could be a complete sentence, an incomplete sentence. But the biggest thing to know is that anything explains more about that statement on the left. Okay, the next rule that you need to know is a semicolon. So with a semicolon, you have to have a complete sentence on both sides. So... Again, though, you could run into a rare situation where they give you a colon and a semicolon and you have two complete sentences. Pick the colon if the second side is expanding on or explaining more about the first side. Um, more on the semicolon, by the way. There's another way that they test it and we'll look at it in the next example. The third thing is a hyphen. You want to pick the hyphen if there's another one already in the sentence. And by the way, you guys, I don't know if you saw this, but Blue Book Exams just released another full practice test. It's for the PSAT NMSQT, which is just as good as an SAT. So I already went in and worked out that test. Comment below if you want to see a walkthrough of this brand new test that was released. And let me know if you've already taken it and if you feel like the difficulty level is similar to a real SAT on there. Theoretically, they should be the same. But I noticed on this new test in Blue Book exams that they do test the hyphen that way. Now, there have been rare occasions where you also could just pick the hyphen if you need to pause and they don't give you a comma. So just keep that in mind. And then the fourth rule is a comma cannot separate two complete sentences. So if you have two complete sentences, do not pick an answer choice that has a comma in it. When I read this one, researchers studying magno magneto sensation have determined why some soil dwelling roundworms in the southern hemisphere move in the opposite direction of Earth's magnetic field when searching for food. In the northern hemisphere, the magnetic field points down into the ground, but in the southern hemisphere, it points up. 
toward the surface and away from worms food sources. Okay, what's happening is they made a statement about how they move in the opposite direction. And then they're going on to explain more about what that means. Not to mention the fact I have a complete sentence on the left-hand side. Why do I have a complete sentence? Because I've got a subject, researchers. I've got a verb, they're determining, they determined. And then I've got a complete thought. Why some soil dwelling roundworms in the Southern hemisphere move in the opposite direction of Earth's magnetic field while searching for food. When I read that, I'm not going, huh, what? Like, tell me more. So I have a complete sense on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is explaining more about what they just said. I'm going to pick the colon. The answer is A. All right, guys. So if you feel like you're getting a lot out of this video so far, I would definitely recommend you sign up for my self-paced digital SAT course. I go more in depth with these grammar rules and situations. And I also cover all the other types of questions on the digital SAT and give you strategies for how to tackle each one to make your life easier and to help get you a way better score. So I'm going to link that up here right now and down in the description. Since you are an awesome YouTube viewer of mine, I'm offering a special just for YouTube. If you put the promo code, 50 off and at checkout, you will get $50 off the course for a limited time. All right. So now we are looking at the last scenario. This is my fifth tip. It deals with semicolons. They are starting to test semicolons in a different way. This has also happened on the paper SAT, but be mindful. Semicolons can separate items in a list. So look for patterns. Like when I see um, this example, I see a semicolon here. And so there's a chance that maybe they're listing things because I see a bunch of commas in between. So it says it helped produce the world's first indigenous language instructional app, Chicksaw Blank. So that would be Chicksaw Basic in 2009. Because then they're introducing something else, Chicksaw TV in 2010 in a Rosetta Stone language course in 2015. So there's parallelism going on. You want to make sure things match up. I've got the thing and then the date. The thing and then the date, the thing and then the date. And after the date comes a semicolon. Why do semicolons separate items in a list? Because in this case, the items in this list already contain commas in them. So it would be confusing to try to separate the, uh, the items with additional commas. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching today. I am so grateful for all of my viewers and for hitting 10,000 subscribers this past week. Oh my gosh, it is blowing my mind. If you made it to the end of this video, please comment below 10,000. And until next time, you guys, happy prepping.